Hello. Hello. I'm waiting for somebody to jump on and tell me that they can hear me because um, this is nuts. So what happened was um, Facebook a couple of minutes ago would not let me go live. For some reason, it just kept like stopping and stopping and stopping and kept saying, my computer kept telling me there was something wrong with Facebook. And um, so can you hear me? That one person watching, I don't know, can you hear me? Because they couldn't hear me a minute ago and I kept on having to re-go live, re-go live, re-go live like 10 fucking times. But I'm trying to make sure you can hear me. So, ugh, this is so annoying. Can you hear me? There's somebody watching, but they're like staying silent. That's kind of, there's two people watching, but everybody's staying silent. That's really creepy. But can you hear me? Can you hear me, Chris? Christopher? Yes, okay, so. So my computer was saying the sound was just perfect, and so they were also saying the picture was perfect, but all of a sudden they kept kicking me off and stuff. But I think it could be my um, caption with the whole new settings on Facebook, how they kind of like, Go through and see what you're fucking doing. Anyways, that's besides the point. So what I was saying was today is Happy Voter Registration Day. And if you haven't registered yet, what the fuck are you doing with your life? And if you have registered, then let's just hope that you register towards the party that um I never thought I'd say this as an openly gay man, but towards the Republican Party. I really hope that you guys registered Republican. Why? Because let's give you some examples of why the left is being fucking stupidish and childish. And I think the left hates the left. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. The left definitely hates the left. They're cashing in off each other. Like crazy. The left knows that the left is kind of stupid and really slow with like everything. So the left knows how to work the left, um, if that makes any sense. So um, I wanted to show you guys a couple of things that I've run into. Like one thing was by Ben and Jerry's. I want to show you guys the article. What about Pete's favorite? Oh my God. Ben and Jerry are your favorite story. Boys, Ben and Jerry are hoping to take back Congress. Ben and Jerry are hoping to take back Congress. Why is it like double down now? That's weird. Well, let me fix this. I won't tell you, Eric. Uh, I just can't play this. No, I like um, cookie dough. Oh, right. cookie oh okay. Dough. Solid. I like the story of the morning. Come up with a new flavor. Friend. Anyways, let me Come open this. Your favorite story of the morning. Your favorite story of the morning. Your favorite story of the morning. Boys, Ben and Jerry are hosting the story of the morning. Boys, Congress, by creating Democrats inspired ice cream flavors after the winter. So let me reopen this. I'm sorry. It's really been tripping out on me. On my phone, my iPad, and my computer. Anyways. They're teaming up with liberal group MoveOn.org and asking people to come up with flavors representing seven progressive candidates running. I can't read it, but. So we asked for your ideas, and of course, America responded, and they're pouring in. This is one from Roy. He emailed Clinton Cashew Surprise. One taste, uh, and you'll be wondering what happened. What about Pelosi pistachio? You have to buy it, then we can know what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious, actually. But is it? Todd Wright, Sanders Socialism Sherbet, very pretty container with nothing. It's Sherbet. Oh, good one. <laughs> Robert tweets. Abolish ice cream. Uh, Get it? Abolish ice cream. Anyways, here's what I'm saying. I think the left hates the left because the left is going to cash in on the left. So Ben and Jerry's founders created Democratic-inspired ice cream flavors to take back Congress. Now, here's the funniest part about it all. So um, <laughs> these are going to sell a lot because Democrats are dumb, and <laughs> they're going to like laugh over the bank. I know they are, and that's kind of crazy. Um, but um, another thing is Michael Moore. Michael Moore just posted a video after he's been doing his whole movie and all this stuff and all this touring, which I've seen some reports on it, and nobody's really going to his tour, his tour at all, in fact. Have you went to his tour? I don't think anybody has. So they showed a whole entire stadium, like, empty with him on stage talking. So what he did recently is he came on and did a video of um, himself, of course, at home, and he was on YouTube, and he said, Trump is smarter than I thought. <laughs> he said... He said, I know they all look like a bunch of racist bastards, but they're smarter than us. They're all smarting us. He said, and if you think, you guys are, if you think we're going to win in November, we're wrong. Thank you, Michael Moore, for the publicity. But I also think that Michael Moore is trying to sell things. And I think that if the left's got their way, Michael Moore would have no career. So I think Michael Moore is doing a little stunt here where he's making the left mad at him. And he's going to come out with this movie talking about I love the left. And the left is stupid enough. They're going to fall for it. But, oh, my God, he does love us. Uh, and that's how he's going to make his millions. So the left is making millions off the left. But back to the Ben and Jerry's thing. So not only is Ben and Jerry's doing the same thing as all the other leftist leaders are doing, playing their own people, um, I decided to make my own flavors. So these are some flavors I came up with. I said, I can name a few. How about 
liberal raspberry, liberal black blueberry tears, and racism raspberry, hypocrisy marmalade, fat free, fact free vanilla. And then my boyfriend said, uneducated nutty butter. He said, fruit takeover minus the red ones, minus the red fruits. He said, feminine frosting, feminine women only hold the feminine nuts. And he said, the Me Too marshmallow brain, <laughs> the rape claim Rocky Road, and the no logic trans flavored sorbet, but feels like ice cream. That is sorbet and not ice cream. But we will say it's ice cream because it feels like it is. Chocolate lives matter. <laughs> and lastly, Trump derangement deplorable vanilla bean. Since they think we're all white. Okay, so those are just some funny things that we put on top of it. So it was kind of funny just to say, since they're letting the public pick the names of the new flavors, why not turn those ones in? And I turned them in. I doubt they're ever going to be used, but how fucking awesome is that, right? So um, everybody's scared right now. Everybody is scared right now of like, well, not everybody. Let's just say the left is scared right now. The left is not only playing each other, making money off each other, fooling each other, but they're also scared right now of each other. So <laughs> that being said, um, we're going to our next topic, which is going to be the Antifa violence in Austin, Texas. There was something happening in Austin. Did you guys hear about it? So Antifa, they try to steal our color. First of all, Antifa now is trying to go red to go against the right. I know, I know, it makes no fucking sense, but let's talk about it, because here's the thing, here's the whole video on it, and it's actually kind of crazy, I'm going to read the article first, now, um, it makes zero sense, and I think they're trying to throw Antifa onto us, like they do racism, and like they do um, separation, like they do um, the segregation, like they do everything, but um, left, just stop, take responsibility for who you are, own up to your shit, be proud of your shit, and stop throwing your old shit onto us. Because we've never done any of the things you claim. Also, left, if you hate somebody like, I don't know, Kavanaugh, how about you just simply say, we don't want somebody on the right being put in the Supreme Court because we are on the left. And I'll have more respect for you. But instead of you just admitting the truth, you want to start this witch hunt and dig into his past and try to make up things that are completely untrue with only women who can kind of remember, but don't really remember too much. And it's kind of fucking stupid and crazy, especially when the woman who encourages you guys to um, believe every single woman, Hillary Clinton, um, is standing behind a man who she, oh, she, I shouldn't even say anything. Come on, you already know, you already know. Bill Clinton has the most fucking sex crimes against him than anybody else ever in our fucking um, judicial, electoral, um, it's superb fucking authority position. <laughs> like, come on, like, come on, wake up. So anyways, back to this. So cast aside illusions, revolution until communism. So this is the new Antifa thing. Let me show you their picture. They think they're all pretty in red. I wish those hats say make America great again. <laughs> so we're gonna read the article, okay? Antifa calls for the formation of a red army to annihilate their enemies. The increasingly violent Antifa group Red Guards Austin is now calling for the formation of a Red Army in a recent blog post they published and shared for the Facebook account this far left extremist group said the following we encourage the formation of param paramilitary organizations on two levels the first being those who are mainly unarmed but are prepared to train but are prepared and trained to carry out fist fighting or using blunt weapons like axe handles or flagpoles as well as shields and basic armoring. The second level is the more advanced embroil of a Red Army, which is trained military and operates as soldiers all the time, engaging in production and mass work among the proletariat and oppressed nation's people. Then they advocate for sustained physical confrontation against anyone they believe to be fascist. It is time for Austin to stand up, to shake off bad leadership trying to impose itself on anti-fascism and come together under a better model of actual resistance and not token performance. When we organize and lead actions, the fascists do not march. Every step they take is met with physical confrontation and they are bombarded from all, all sides. Are they serious right now? On the basis of our principles, united front work 
Fascists and their collaborators can be drowned out, run out, routed, beaten bloody, and even annihilated. These are all our principles, and we aim to hold them to very finish. That is Antifa's new motto, violence, hate, and death. And they are now still in our color, like they steal all of our things, like, you know, not being racist. Um, they're still our fucking color, and they're saying cast aside illusions, revolution until communists. Tell me why Facebook did not delete this group. Facebook, you're going to silence me, you motherfucker. Some little girly boy who talks a little bit on the right, but you're not going to silence this? Facebook? Facebook. <laughs> Bitch, get it together. Mark, 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 Mark. Let's talk Zuckerberg. Okay. I get that you're on the left, and I get that you are um, kind of stupid, but I didn't think you were retarded. I'm not talking Donald Trump retarded. I'm talking about, like, real retarded. Like, actual retarded, you know, the people we don't make fun of. I'm going to make fun of you. I'm asking you a question. Like, are you really that retarded? These are just more reasons to not vote left this um these these um blah, 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 this election this November. And if you do vote left and you still know these things, are you retarded? <laughs> like, I don't get it. But let's go into the very next thing. Okay. Other than Antifa being nuts, like we already knew they were, but now they're taking to a whole new level of nuts. Pray for Austin. My heart's with you. Let's talk about Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh. I'm so sick of hearing Kavanaugh. Seriously, like, I'm so sick of hearing Kavanaugh. Especially when the only thing you think you have against him, it has no proof and nothing, and it's coming from the party that supports the president who has the most fucking nasty fucking record in the world. Like, this is, should be thrown out since the beginning. Like, just, he's gonna win. He's gonna be a fucking Supreme Court justice. Can you just fucking accept it already? Oh, wait. You're trying to put it off till after November's elections, as if you're gonna win that anyways. Everybody sees your hypocrisies, everybody sees your stupidity, and everybody sees your hate. And your groups, your own people, like I said, I think the left hates the left. Because your groups like Antifa is not making it any easier for you. Your groups like Hillary Clinton speaking out saying all women should be fucking given the benefit of the doubt as she silences another woman. Your hypocrisies are so outlandish and so out in the open. Like, aren't you a little ashamed? Just a little bit. If not, you probably should be. We, as children, when we're little kids, we, when we lie or we are found hypocritical, we feel bad. We might even feel a little guilt. We might even try to lie again to cover up that other lie. You guys don't even do that anymore. You're just outlandishly hypocritical, and it's crazy to me that anybody would trust their money, their freedom, and their life with you. You've gone so far to our happier parties not wanting to be socialists. It's crazy. You guys stand under a woman, and you guys call her a beacon of women, as she stays with a man who cheated on her. 16 times, allegedly. Nine in the Oval Office where you wanted her to sit and fucking make world decisions. Wake the fuck up. I'm not hating you if you're on the left. I'm telling you, your party hates you if you're on the left. Your party, who advocates for women, but one leader stays with a man who cheats on her. The other leader is beating his wife. He's the chairman of the DNC. These are your advocates for women? Or do they want to keep women down and make women feel like they're nothing but fucking victims like the left has always told them they are? Because let me tell you something about the right. Donald Trump employs more women in managerial positions in the White House than ever before, ever in history. For the first time ever, we have a mother as the White House correspondent. Why are you so fucking silent about that? If you are for women's rights, you should be celebrating that, shouldn't you? You should be celebrating the streets that we are lucky to be alive during a time in America where we are the most equal we've ever been. And yet you're silent, but that's what you wanted. You wanted equality, you're getting it, and you're upset. You wanted women equality, you're getting it, and you're upset. You wanted African American equality, you're getting it, you're upset. And you wanted Mexican, Asian, and everybody else, every other minority equality, and you're getting it, and you're upset. And you're still claiming you're not getting it. I think you're afraid to get it because once you get it, you're going to realize you have nothing to cry about. And when you have nothing to cry about, you have nothing to ask for. And we have nothing to hand you except for a fucking brain. Wake up. So, I'm going to keep it a little cute before we get a little too serious. So we're going to talk about this. These are the sexual assault allegations against Bill Clinton. Let's talk about, I'm not going to name all, I'm not going to go through all the cases, but we're going to name them, okay? Just to be funny. Four women over the past 
few decades have publicly accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault or harassment. One woman accused Clinton of raping her. And his wife, his wife, Hillary Clinton, yeah, that Hillary Clinton, his wife is the one that you guys are saying to listen to when she says, all women deserve the benefit of the doubt. What about these women? Do they deserve the benefit of the doubt? And they have more proof than Kavanaugh's girls. And he was president of the United States, not in college. So anyways, amid ongoing national attention on the issue of sexual assault and workplace harassment, Democrats and others on the left are beginning to re-examine their response to the allegations against Clinton. Whoa, are they waking up? Is the left waking up? Because we're sick of walking away. I mean, if you guys just fucking get your shit together, I can come back home. Like, I, am pr I was, was proud to say I was liberal. But now I'm ashamed and disgusted by it. To where I am now proud... Um, Again, I'm still so weirded out saying I'm a proud Republican. The only one thing you guys got against Republicans is that some of them might be religious, which means they might hate some gays. That's a small percentage of us, bitch. The rest of us are for our whole constitution. In the constitution, we are aware that it covers all of us, not just you. President Bill Clinton's decision to lie under oath about his consensual affair with the White House intern Monica Lewinsky almost forced him from the presidency. But it didn't? He didn't get impeached for that? That's crazy. The allegations made by four other women that Clinton either sexually assaulted or harassed them have done little to dis discredit him among his supporters. Clinton has denied all the allegations against him, of course, including those made by four other women who say they had consensual extramarital relations with him. As the national spotlight focuses on sexual assault and the harassment following a flood of accusations of misconduct against dozens of prominent men in Hollywood, the media, and politics, Democrats and others on the left are beginning to re-examine their response to allegations against Clinton. Everybody in mainstream press is calling all of Bill Clinton's crimes infidelities. Kathleen Wiley, one of the women who has accused Clinton of harassment, told the Fox News host, Sean, blah, 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 rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment are not infidelities. They are crimes and they are misdemeanors, she said. And shut the fuck up about Kavanaugh. Here are the allegations of sexual assault and harassment against him. There's the first one. Juanita Broderick. The second one. Kathleen Wiley. The third one. The most infamous, Paula Jones. Paula Jones. That's the one, you know, that Hillary grabbed by the arm. There's a police report. Hillary assaulted her, and Hillary told her to keep her fucking mouth shut. Hillary also paid her $400,000 to keep her mouth shut, which she didn't keep her mouth shut, thank God. I hope she still enjoyed the $400,000, though. As Hillary says, every woman deserves a voice. Let's talk about Leslie Millie. There's another one. And last and most popular, Monica Lewinsky, whose dress is in a museum. The dress with the cum stain is in the museum. Sometimes when I speak about these things, I feel like I'm like, I can't even, like, it's so obviously stupid and so obviously hypocritical that if you don't see it, that to me, it blows my fucking mind to where it's like me saying it even sounds stupid because that's how fucking hypocritical it is. Like, it's so crazy. So get over to Kavanaugh bullshit. Just know he's going to fucking be fucking elected. And if you want to wait till after or before the elections, it doesn't matter. We're going to win the elections too because you guys are being so crazy. But um, on top of the elections winning, you guys can wait till whatever you want. But just know he's going to be sworn in. And then just know you guys are going to be stuck with a Supreme Court justice for the next 40 years who will not forget how his life was almost smeared by the Democratic Party. And that's the person that has to reign over all of us, including the Democratic Party. Do you know what you guys are doing right now? You guys are making a crazy man. You're making a sad, sad, mad, mad, crazy man. And luckily, I moved to the right, so I'm not going to have to fucking deal with that fucking gunshot to my face. You are. For 40 years. He's pretty young. He's not old like the other ones. Do you know what that means, guys? He'll be here a long time. Hating the Democratic Party. Ruling over the whole country. But who did this? You did. Your own party did this. And that, to me, is what karma looks like. You do bad things, you lie, and you do bad, you do bad things, you lie, you do bad things, you lie, you do bad things, you lie, you're gonna get fucking horrible shit happening to you. Don't be surprised, bitch. So let me tell you something. Why can't you guys on the left just be honest? I'm on the left, so I don't want somebody on the right being another Supreme Court justice. Just say it.
Just say it, and I'll respect you more. We will respect you more. The whole right will respect you more. People will respect you more, and people might even respect your right to fucking vote differently. But you know what? We have class on the right, so we're still going to respect your right to vote differently. But we're going to laugh when Kavanaugh disrespects you for the next 40 years. You guys are digging holes for yourselves. You guys are hating yourselves so much. The self-hate fit-throwing that has been going on for two years is so ridiculous. You've taught our children to act like children. You've taught our children to have no respect. You've taught our children, if you want something, cry for it. You are horrible, horrible acting adults. And this Kavanaugh bullshit, like every article you read is, they might try to find evidence. They think. They may have some evidence. Oh, and it's the same lawyer who came for Trump all maliciously and childlike. Why are we not surprised? First of all, us on the right see this and we're like, really? Like, they're letting people say this? They're like, this is the most childish, pit-throwing thing I've ever seen in my life. But you guys are seriously going to stand behind that? If you voted for Hillary Clinton, shut the fuck up about me too. If you voted for Hillary Clinton, shut the fuck up about me too. If you voted for Hillary Clinton, shut the fuck up about me too. Because you... Do not advocate for women who have been assaulted. You support women being silenced if you support Hillary Clinton. That's a fact, not an opinion. <sighs> and then even worse, I, saw, I heard Hillary say the other day something about prison reform. Oh, shit. Let's not forget when her husband was president, more black people were put into prisons than ever before in history when her husband was president. Kind of similar how when Obama was president and we also sent home more illegals, and yes, he called them illegals, not undocumented. He said illegals, we sent the most illegals in our nation's history, but that's the point, right? We're gonna ignore those things? Yeah. So anyways, let's keep going on. So let's talk about women's victim rights. When should a woman be heard? According to Hillary Clinton, it should be always. They should always get the benefit of doubt. Okay. Well then, why are we so silent about the DNC chairperson who beat the fuck up his wife? Why are we so silent about that? And why are we so silent on Bill? Even better, why did Bill Clinton sit behind Aretha Franklin during her funeral? <laughs> I know it's so unrelated, but did you guys notice that? Did you guys notice how Aretha Franklin's funeral, her kids and her, her grandkids had to like come up on stage to go and talk? Why weren't the family sitting right behind it? And why did they talk shit about Trump? Because Aretha Franklin supported Trump. That's a little weird. Looks like that's another political ploy. Another disrespectful thing from the left. Is there something that the left will not disrespect? Like, is there one thing you guys will not hypocritize or disrespect? Please. I want something to say. You guys might still have a little bit of you to be a good person. But I don't see it happening. I'll wait. Can you name one thing you stand behind that I cannot debunk? Let's play that game. Or is this going to be more liberal logic of, I hate you, I don't trust you, but I want you to be the one to handle my guns and money. Like I said, silence. Radio silence. So anyway, so we're going to keep on going on with this. Um, a video from back in 90s. Sandy, I will look it up as soon as I'm done. I haven't even looked at any of the comments until just now. I'm sorry, guys. So anyways, so we're going to go into the next thing, which is going to be Socialism, our favorite subject of today. Socialism, what we all want to be tomorrow. Er, just kidding. Nobody wants that. So socialism. So there was a video posted about, um, you know that one New Yorker, what's her name? Um, Crazy. She's like 27. She's a kind of nuts. She, her name is stupid. Anyways, that dumb girl who's like, socialism, ah, ah, get to the rich, get to the poor, whatever. That girl. Anyways, Akasa. Sorry, it took me a long time to remember what retarded things are. So, um, this Akaza girl, she just recently was in a video where, um, from her own party, that was asking, where did you expect this money to come from? She can only account for $2 billion of the $40 billion it would take for her platform to actually work. And she still had no answer. And the, her own, the own guy on um, her channel, whatever she was on, let me, let me just find it for you, okay? Because I'm bad at explaining shit like that. But let's look it up. Social is, um, if you look up the word socialism, by the way, you'll see all her stuff, <laughs> which is kind of even crazier. So anyway, the point is, in the video, she had no, she, she couldn't recall where the money should come from or where it will come from. She just wants socialism to happen. And to me, it was kind of scary to see that because that was her own people and it was her own news people that were talking to her. And it was still very, very unknown. 
And I don't want somebody to try to run things in this country where they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, first of all, or if they don't know if it's going to hurt us or make us better. Like, that's kind of fucking scary to me. And it kind of um, should be a red flag to all people on the left. But as we know, people on the left don't mind it. Oddly enough. So until I find that video, I'm going to go into this video that I am brought up the whole situation. So Ben Shapiro reveals how to demolish socialist ideas within a second. I debate socialists all the time, and their only real comeback is, well, that's not real Let me socialism. Look the video. That's not real yeah. communism. Is there any way to really get around that and try to make them see that, look, just because your version of socialism, that magical fantasy land version of socialism, has not been tried, doesn't mean that socialism is an acceptable concept. So the problem is that you're arguing with them in terms of the effectiveness of socialism. So what the, that argument is you say socialism doesn't work, it fails everywhere, makes people poor and miserable, right? That's the argument. And then they go, but that's because it hasn't been properly tried, right? That's their comeback. Here's, so here is the actual argument that works with socialism. It is immoral to steal from people even if you vote to steal from people. Okay, if there are three people in a room, it's me and I have a hundred bucks and you and your friend are in the room and you vote to beat me up and take my money, that does not make it morally legitimate for you to beat me up and take my money. One of, the great, one of the great lies that's been told about socialism, and you see this all the time, is people say socialism, beautiful idea in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. No, socialism is a shitty idea in theory, and it's an immoral idea in practice. Okay? They Amen. Socialism violates at least three of the basic Ten Commandments for those who still care. It makes government into God. Well, it okay. suggests that you can steal from people if you vote for it. And it says that it is good to be covetous of your neighbor's ass. Right, for Bill Clinton, it has a different meaning. But <laughs> the problem for conservatives is we never actually argue on a moral level. We're constantly arguing on an effective level, on an efficiency level. And that's a problem because the left always argues on the moral level. In the end, they always say, sure, my ideas don't work, but they're fair. They're fair, right? And so what you have to say, the only way to come back to that from that is to say, no, your ideas are not fair. Your ideas are theft. Your ideas are theft. You don't get to steal from other people just because you want their stuff. That's the only way to beat that argument, do it on the moral level. Otherwise, they can always argue, well, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Okay, there's no way to come back from that, because, again, they're operating in unicorn land with gumdrop rainbows and fairy skies. That's kind of, um, truth, <laughs> I guess. So here's the thing. So the way I believe it, that it's kind of stupid to even think that socialism is going to work. I think that to even say, but I also think it's equally stupid to say, well, Venezuela. I think that's just as stupid to say because we are different than Venezuela, just like we are different from um, Norway and other places. We are very different. And in fact, I think we have different outcomes. Do I think we have a good outcome? No. Do I think we have different outcomes? Yes. Do I think we have a little bit more successful outcome? Probably. But I don't think it's still all right because stealing is wrong. I mean, people in a country that is um, founded on working hard to get what you want, people will get that taken from them to be divided up equally to people who don't try as hard. Then you're going to raise a bunch of generations of people who expect. And when people expect things, we get things like, I don't know, people abusing the welfare system, people getting mad that they don't have enough handouts, people protesting because they think school should be free. <gasps> Look at that. Maybe that's where it came from. So you think to fix that, your idea is to give more of that. Kind of crazy. But on this Okaza video, I can't find it right now. But I mean, it was all up there. I will find it and will be posted in the comment section below. I guarantee you guys it will be there. But um, just now it was kind of fucking crazy. She couldn't even tell her own people. And they were from leftist polls that were interviewing her and talking to her. And she looked like she was as stupid and speechless. So um, that's uh, this girl. First of all, who? why is she so big? Why is Alexandria Okaza so fucking big why like i don't understand what does she say that makes you guys listen that much because she everything she said everything i've ever seen and i don't just look up right wing things i'm a faggot so i have a lot of left wingers on my profiles you guys are probably watching you guys are the ones who hate me right so yeah so i keep you guys on there for a reason i don't block anybody or anything like that they block me i don't block them on purpose because it gives me the algorithm of both sides and i do see both sides that's why i'm looking for this article about um her and her side which she sounded dumb to her own side it was kind of sad <laughs> but it is what it is you know so let's look up Okaza. Maybe that's where it's going to be at. So, socialist budget. Oh, Jesus. 
There's so much craziness about this, about her budget. The budget is calling for $40 billion for this to work. And she says, well, we already give into the healthcare system. We already give into these things. You're right. We do. The people who give into it. The people who work hard for that. So don't say we, because you're probably not one of them, first of all. Second of all, I get your whole feelings of I want to help the poor. Girl, I grew up poor. I get it. And I had less help because I was white and a male. So I get it. I want to help the world too. I want to save the world too, but none of us are fucking Superman. What we can do is be better people for our future generations to at least help them, not fall into the same pits some of us have. We can also guide the ones who have fallen into pits by telling them where the door is to get out of the pit, as opposed to having to go open the door for them, walk into their pit, and lift them up out of their pit and carry them out of the door. No. No. That's what you want to do. That's what socialism is. Not doing it. Not doing it, bitch. Not doing it. Because once you have to move somebody who's already laying down, pretty soon you're going to find out you're going to have to move them off a bed that they're on. Then you're going to have to move them off the couch they're on. You have to move their whole life for them. You have to pay their bills for them. Not happening, girl. You may be only 27 years old, but I, for one, am about to be 30, and I do not think that people our age are that stupid. But then again, you proved me wrong. It's just so crazy. And put whatever word you want in front of it. Put Democrat in front of it. Put idiot in front of it. It doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. So, Okaza, um, I, I'm wondering where you think this budget is going to come from, too, and a lot of people are, and everybody's talking about it right now, and um, it's kind of crazy how you think that we already have that kind of money, because we don't, and you say it's not going to be a pie-in-the-sky kind of situation, which it is. Just that, a pie-in-the-sky. It's a want. It's, a, it's a, a fake... How do I say this? It's bullshit, okay? Like, pure bullshit. So, is this the one? Yeah, it just blew my part that she didn't know where she was going to get the money from, and that kind of should raise alarms in everybody's fucking minds because this is crazy. This is not okay that we're going to try to trust somebody who only can account for $2 billion and $40 billion. Like, is this it? It seems like all the students don't have a grip on history, and it's because... I want to put a Fox News one because I know how you guys love Fox. Sorry, I'm looking for. I I'm, I'm set on this video. It's so crazy because it's just it's her. It's coming from her mouth, so it's not like it's gonna be from anybody else or anything like that. Um, I want you to hear from her because there's a lot of people's opinions about her. And I mean, we all got them, but she's just she's kind of. Stu I think she literally is stupid, like like dumb. And the thing is, she she went to school for foreign affairs, and she didn't know shit about what's happening across seas. So I'm gonna show you a Prager U video first. Why is it for it's not the same as socialism, socialism, because it's democratic, right? Or something, right? People are buying that. People buy that now, right? Apparently. As though adding the word democratic in front of a word changes what it means. Just because we toss something to a vote doesn't change what that something is, nor does it alter whether that something is inherently good or bad. A couple of examples, because I know you'll ask, Hamas was democratically elected as the government in Gaza, despite the fact that the destruction of not only Israel, but the eradication of all Jews is in their official charter. Robert Mugabe, or Bobby Mugabe if you prefer, was democratically elected by a loving majority in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, how's that working out? Venezuela? Well, Hugo Chavez, noted personal favorite and friend of Sean Penn, to whom he constantly pointed as being unfairly characterized as a dictator when, in fact, he was democratically elected as a socialist. Well, how'd that work out for Venezuela? Well, it's now on the brink of collapse, despite it being one of the most resource-rich nations in the entire world. Basic things like eggs, milk, flour, and toilet paper are either too expensive for the average Venezuelan or simply out of stock. Out of stock, mind you, democratically. I know. Some of you will say, well, that's not fair, because really, we knew all along it technically was a dictatorship. Okay, that's fair. Let's move on to example number two. Denmark? Okay, here's the time where you point to an entirely homogenous population, about 1 60th the size of America's, and you point to that as the blueprint. Okay, let's go there. This is a place where the middle class can't even afford a car because of the 180% new car tax. And the prime minister was so fed up with Americans pointing to it as a beacon for socialist success that he felt compelled to clarify, I would like to make one thing clear. 
Denmark is far from a socialist planned economy. Denmark is a market economy. Sweden, I love Sweden. Okay, great bikini team, and thanks to that country, my arm war now doubles as a bookcase. Speaking of which, the founder of IKEA, let's be honest, the only really cool export from Sweden, aside from a few good hockey players, left Sweden because of the stifling high tax rate. So, Sweden, good place, not bad people, but a successful model for a viable economy in today's global market? Incorrect. The fact is that over time, the greatest enemy of socialism is reality. The reality that human nature will invariably pull certain people toward individualism and success and others toward laziness and collectivism. The tension between the makers and the takers always, always leads to socialism's inevitable collapse. But I know that I can give you examples of failed socialist economies until I'm blue in the face and you won't care. Because at least socialism is inherently more morally altruistic than the evil, greedy, capitalist, warmongering seen in the West. Greed? What's more greedy than wanting to take from someone else something that you haven't earned? Unlike capitalism, free enterprise, which can only occur truly through voluntary transaction, socialism can only occur at gunpoint. That's what it comes down to. If you don't pay your taxes, once you get through the IRS and the auditing and the lawyers and the PR stunts, People make you give the government your money, increasing amount of your money, the more successful you are, or they send in scary men with guns to take you away. Now, so long as the people having their stuff taken away at gunpoint are in the minority, and the majority feels that they'll get to benefit from more said taken stuff, you'll always be able to win that decision through a popular vote and claim the moral high ground through democracy. Putting the word democratic in front of your socialism doesn't make it any inherently more moral nor less violent did you get that American oh wait wait and one other thing so you guys are also saying people who want to give all your guns only to the government and the cops before you go socialist is this a plan is this a plan are you planning on doing this but i found a fucking video so sit tight we're gonna watch it together it's from cnn you know, the ones who everybody hates. Well, I want her to speak from her own platform so you guys can hear her stupidity from her own people, okay? Load. Your platform has called for various new programs, including Medicare for All, Housing is a Federal Right, a Federal Jobs Guarantee, Tuition-Free Public College, Canceling All Student Loan Debt. Um, according to nonpartisan and left-leaning studies friendly to your cause, including the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities or the Tax Policy Center, the overall price tag is more than $40 trillion in the next decade. You recently said in an interview that increasing tax Sorry, I said billion, and trillion. An increased corporate tax rate would make $2 trillion over the next 10 years. So where is the other $38 trillion going to come from? Well, one of the things that we need to realize when we look at something like Medicare for All, Medicare for All would save the American people a very large amount of money. And what we see as well is that these systems are not just uh, pie in the sky. They are, many of them are accomplished by every modern civilized democracy in the Western world. The United, uh, the United Kingdom has a form of single-payer health care, Canada, France, Germany. What we need to realize is that these investments are better and they are good for our future. These are generational investments so that not just, they're not short-term band-aids, but they are really profound decisions about who we want to be as a nation and, as, and how we want to act as the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. Right, no, I, I get that. But uh, you, the price tag for everything that you've laid out in your campaign is $40 trillion over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that Medicare for All uh, would cost more to some wealthier people uh, and to the government and to taxpayers while also reducing individual health care expenditures. But I'm talking about the overall package. You say it's not pie in the sky, but $40 trillion is quite a bit of money. Uh, and the, the taxes that you talked about raising to pay for this, to pay for your agenda, only count for two and I, I we're going by left-leaning uh, analysts right well when you look again at again how our health care works currently we pay much of these costs go into the private sector so what we see is for example 
you know, a year ago, I was working downtown in a restaurant. I, I went around and I asked how many of you folks have health insurance? Not a single person did because these, they were paying, they would have had to pay $200 a month uh, for, for a payment for insurance that, that had an $8,000 deductible. What these represent are lower costs overall for these programs. And additionally, what this is, is a broader agenda. We do know and we acknowledge that there are political realities. They don't always happen with just the wave of a wand, but we can work to make these things happen. And in fact, when, we, when you look at the economic activity that it spurs, for example, uh, if you look at my generation, millennials, mm -hmm. the amount of, of economic activity that we do not engage in, the fact that we delay purchasing homes, that we don't participate in the economy and purchasing cars, etc., as fully as possible, is a cost. It is a, a an externality, if you will, of of a unprecedented unprecedented amounts so, of student loan debt. Oh no! They cut the end. It was the end was really funny. The end was when he came in. All he says, he said, "So I have to go. I'm not going to get an answer from you." This is the little. Like that's literally how he ended it. Like. How fucking funny is that, right? This is the beautiful, Anyways, so I want to show you guys that video because it's just crazy to me that that's her own people. Like, the left has their own shit against each other, and it's like, you guys, your messes, like, get it together. So you guys just saw two videos, one saying why socialism is stupid, and the other one proving that socialism, the face socialism is stupid. So <laughs> that's that. So when it comes to, from Ben and Jerry's, from um, Michael Moore, to Kavanaugh, to women's victim rights, to socialism, to now Joy Behar. Like, I feel like I'm on that show Roast. You know, like, you know when you know, they roast somebody, whatever, like when they roasted Justin Bieber. I feel like I'm just roasting you, motherfuckers. I'm not trying to. I'm really not trying to, but bitch, it's easy. You guys make it, uh, like, just stop. But you guys won't. So now we're going to go into Joy Behar. So the thing happened with Joy Behar that's really fucking retarded. Joy Behar cannot get her shit together ever because Joy Behar now is saying she'd rather marry a rapist than, let, let me just show it to you yourself. This blew my fucking mind that this is even an option for her to say publicly and still keep her position on her show because how does she get away with that? Okay, watch. It says, the views Joy Behar, I vote for a rapist as long as they are pro-abortion. Let me let that sink in. Like, Joy Behar, <laughs> I vote for a rapist as long as they were pro abortion. She also says Hillary is in the quadrary, in my opinion, because she talked about violence against women and sexual harassment and all that stuff, and her husband has a checkered past, to put, in mild, to put it mildly. So she is in a bind. Whoopi Goldberg says he's not perpetuated violence against women. Whoopi Goldberg, are you a fucking idiot? Behar says, they are accusations. Oh! 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 Just only accusations, so we shouldn't take them seriously? Okay. And then <laughs> Goldberg says, that's right, just accusations. Paul Ferris said, there are accusations, but there are three women that claim that he did things to them that they didn't want. One of them is Paula Jones. Bayard said, remember her? Ferris says, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Wiley. They say that he either exposed himself to them, raped them, or groped them. These are three accusations. Raven Simone says, this has nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. It has nothing to do with that. He would be the first man. You know what the first lady is? Raven Simone, I used to like you. I like that you say you're not African American. I like that you say no, but you're just only American. I like that. I like that you say the labeling is Scott to stop. I like that you say your sexuality is not important. But I hate that you're so stupid to think that Bill Clinton has nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. You fucking idiot. Like they have so much to do together, they might as well be married. Oh look, they are. Like how dumb can you be, Raven Simone? That's so retarded. But Joy Behar topped the cake when she said. I'd vote for rapists as long as they're pro-abortion. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, except for you're stupid. Just, just 
like my caption says, Joy Behar, shut the fuck up already. Just please. Just please, please, please. But Roseanne can keep a fucking show. That was actually a hit. That got more ratings than any other fucking comeback. That fucking is a great fucking show. And she's not a racist. She got fucking pinned as this fucking person by somebody, I don't know, Wanda Sykes, who um, that November posted her own racial slurs on Twitter but never got in trouble. You guys come for Roseanne Barr. You guys think she's a horrible person. But you guys, how did Joy Behar still have a show? Like, how is this happening? And why is nobody on the left upset at all? People in your party are saying they will vote for rapists. How is nobody in your party mad at all? People in your party are married to fucking rapists. How is nobody in your party mad at all? But you guys want to sit in front of the Kavanaugh fucking hearing and throw fits for days as you ignore the DNC chairperson who just beat his wife. Do you feel dumb yet at all? At all? Like, a little dumb? Just a little bit? Like, do you have a soul? I know you're not all gingers. No offense, gingers. But do you guys have souls at all? At this point, I can't see how you guys can hate anything about the right more than your own party who hates you. Again, again, I know what you're going to say. People on the right, they're religious and they hate gays. Shut the fuck up. Because I could say the ones that do hate gays, at least my presence is making a lot of them turn around and tell me thank you. I'm getting so many people message me daily, today even, where they said, thank you so much. I did not support gay people until I heard you. I did not support, I thought gay people hated people on the right, but they don't. So thank you. They thank me all the time. I change minds daily. The only way we're ever going to change the conservative mindset is by joining in the conser conservation itself and showing them that we are normal people. We do have normal morals and we do have normal beliefs. And you know what? They actually are easier to turn around and befriend than it is to, for me, a gay person, to befriend another gay person who's on the left. Tell me why it's easier for me to come out as gay to a Republican than it is for me to come out as Republican to a gay. Do you feel bad yet at all? But in, this, in the spirit of... Voter Registration Day. I hope when you guys do go and vote, you guys simply realize that, hmm, maybe you guys will think to yourselves, I don't want to look stupid anymore. And maybe you'll vote for the right. Because vote for the right, because the only way, the only moralistic thing, the only truth that I'm seeing anywhere, even when they have opinions I don't exactly agree with, at least they're not lying about them, or hypocritizing them, or creating things like dramas against a really good man's life, as they ignore the president, or the wannabe president wife, who is married to somebody doing the exact things that they're trying to ruin Kavanaugh's life with. Do you feel bad yet? Do you feel bad that millions, not thousands, but millions of you are walking away from the Democratic Party? Do you feel bad that you're about to lose in November and even Michael Moore made a video saying you're going to lose in November? Are you scared yet at all? Are you scared that there's trans people, gay people, lots of people that are very, very different, very left-leaning people that are now wearing these red hats? Just give it all the I wear this red hat, bitch. The fuck? I will never be proud of a party that thinks that we can segregate for equality, who files us away into different factions and different groups and smaller fucking subgroups. I will not be a part of that. I refuse to be a part of a party who thinks racism will fix racism. I refuse to be part of a party who thinks putting down men will uplift women. I refuse to be part of a party who says they're there for women, but spits in the face of four women accusing fucking Clinton or the wife of the DNC chairperson. I refuse to give in to domestic violence and think that that's okay to ignore. I refuse to let people on the left bully me with violence and hate and death threats every day into silence. I'm not Hillary Clinton or I'm not somebody that can be silenced by Hillary Clinton or by you. I'm lonely as fuck out here in California, but I have a million great friends all across the states, and bitch, I'm going to D.C., so. Next, I'll be there with, um, I don't know, Kavanaugh and the president. And all you guys are doing is creating such a bad name for you that when you do lose the house, when you do not have a way back in, you're going to have people in the Supreme Court that hate the left because of what they did to his personal life. You're going to have people in the White House that hate the left because of what they did to his personal life. You're going to hate. You're going to have people hate you as opposed to just simply think opposite of you. And this is what you're creating. 
This is the world you're creating to live in. Thank God I went to the right when I did because I'm not going to fucking, like I said earlier in the video, I'm not the one going to get the fucking gunshot to the face. That's you. That's you. You're creating enemies as opposed to having a fellow American debate. But you're not going to stop. This video is not going to make you stop. Nobody's going to feel dumb for their hypocrisies. Otherwise, you want to do them. You're going to continue to do them. Joy Behar is going to continue to have a show. People are going to continue to um, accuse Kavanaugh. People are going to continue to say that women are victims unless Bill Clinton touched them. People are going to continue to say Antifa is okay because they're making violence in the name of good. People are going to continue to think socialism is good even though that Okaza girl has no fucking brains. People are going to continue to buy Ben and, Jerry, ben and Jerry's and they're going to buy them even more as soon as they get those um, Democrat names for their ice cream. And people are going to continue to go and register to vote today. And you know who that people is? That's the only difference of all the things I said. Republicans. People on the left are going to go register as Republicans today. I know it. I've heard it. I've seen it. Because let's be real, the rest of you leftists have opinions on Facebook. Most of you don't even vote. Is that a fact? I mean, I think 2016 election kind of says it all. But keep throwing your fits. Keep hating me. Keep hating others who think clearly. We're not here to hate you. We're not here to put you down. We're here to just say, what? And why are you thinking this way? Like, you think that when people point these things out, you'd be like, oh, shit, that is hypocritical. Maybe I should rethink what I'm doing. But no, you don't. So it looks like we have to kind of be harsh about it and let you know you're just being a fucking idiot. So I'll continue to do so, just like a bunch of people continue to do so. And Facebook, continue to not post my videos, continue to kick me off lives. But don't forget, you're still paying me, Facebook, who monetized me when they thought I was a liberal. So keep on shutting us down, but we will keep on talking. Keep on hating, we will keep on living. Keep on fucking hating America, and you will keep benefiting, because we will keep on working hard for everybody, not just ourselves. So that's that, and I'm done with this video today. I'm going to go check out the Hopkins video, Eddie Hopkins that Eddie Hopkins sent me. I haven't read any of the comments yet, so I will go back and check them. I'm sure I... During this video, like got off track. I'm sure I also speak unclearly. I'm sure I also took a while to upload these videos. It's okay. I don't give a fuck. Keep judging me all you want. Nobody's perfect. And I'm just here to say happy registration day and vote, 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 vote. And get off Kevin's ass, okay? Thank you. Stay pretty. Bye.